I'm Shani and I'm recovering from eating disorder. Hi Shani, hi! Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. I am Shani and I do videos about mental health and eating disorders and I'm in recovery from an eating disorder and I like to share things that will help like Fear Food Fridays because um, this is what in my brain got me to get better. Last year was I did these steps in my brain every time I ate and it worked really, really well. So I was like, oh, I should make a really cute board about it. And then I should like share it with people and that'll be amazing. And then I was like, okay, well, let's do it then. And then I did it then. And then, and then I did it. And so then we're doing it and, and that's it. That's all. Welcome to another Fear Food Friday. Today we are going to be eating cheeseburgers. I asked you guys, I narrowed it down to three again, and I asked you guys on Instagram, everyone voted cheeseburgers. We're going to eat a cheeseburger from Del Taco. If you have Del Taco in your area, go. It's incredible. They have obviously Mexican food, but also, this is really cold, I might go warm this up. Um, but also burgers and fries and stuff like that. And it's really, really good. I'm gonna go warm this up, I'll be right back. Well, I prepared my food by warming it up. <laughs> and now I have to hurry and eat it before it gets cold again. So let's go through these really quickly, but prepare and commit and decide that you're gonna eat. And again, I know different eating, dark, there are some eating disorders that this will not help. And I understand that and we'll get to that in a minute. But for now, this is what we're doing. So prepare and commit. I'm committing to eat this. It's good for me, I need it, my body needs it. Step two, we're gonna bless and thank the food. So I'm gonna say a prayer. You don't have to listen. You can skip ahead, but I do encourage that you think for your food, wherever you think the food came from. I very much encourage that you be grateful of it. It's a very, very important step in eating disorder recovery. Okay, here we go. Every day, Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this day. We're so grateful that we could be here together today. And we're so grateful for this food. We're thankful for the hands that prepared it. We're thankful for the girl that delivered it to me. Um, and we're so grateful for each other and this opportunity to be in this life and to have trials and learn and grow from them. And please bless that this food will nourish and strengthen our bodies. We love you so much and say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. So now we're going to start eating. Oh, I keep forgetting to move it as I go. I need to remember to do that. All right. So cheeseburger. Del Taco has the best cheeseburgers. They do like diced onions and like the burger sauce, you know, like the fry sauce. Okay, best bite first. Oh, that's delicious. The reason I do best bite first is because I'm a binge eater and I love food. And I used to do best bite last but I found that that made me, that triggered me to eat the entire thing. If you eat the best bite first, then you won't feel like you have to finish it if you can't. We're listening to our bodies. I'm so sorry, I'm drinking orange cream, Stewart's orange cream that I opened last night. Okay, so I do want to talk about Gypsy Rose a little bit, and I do want to talk about a couple other things. Um, so before that, I just want to say, chew, flow live, really chew up that food, really take your time with it, savor it before you swallow, really take your time if you can. It helps digestion and it helps stomach pains if you do that. So um, one thing that I do want to say, I'm getting some comments that are like, why are you doing such unhealthy foods? Like that's so bad for you. Why don't you do like vegetables or salads or whatever else? And um, the thing is, is if you're asking about my personal diet, I do. Don't worry, this isn't all that I eat. Like this morning I had a bagel and <laughs> I had some fruit for breakfast and now I'm eating this. Later I'm gonna eat another meal that's a little bit healthier. For the most part, that's what Fear of Food Friday is. That's what it's about. I mean, not many people have a healthy food item as a fear food. So 
that's why you're seeing me eat so many unhealthy things is because I'm trying to show people that it's okay to eat these two and it's okay to eat moderation. And right now, if you're in the depths of your eating disorder, it's okay just to eat anything. Like, like, and again, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a doctor or anything like that, but I know that it can be really hard at first. And for me at first, all I focused on last year was just eating, period. I didn't even care what was in the food. I just ate whatever sounded good and got my body used to holding the food down and start to work again and digest again. And now that I feel like I'm in kind of a better place or I'm getting to a better place, um, I can start incorporating more foods that are good for me, that, that I need to be eating. Do you know what I'm saying? So. I have a really small mouth. Inside and outside. And I can't open my mouth very big. So it's really hard to eat this. So I'm like, just gonna smash it a little. Okay, so don't worry. If you're worried about me, don't worry. I'm getting nutrition every day. I'm doing great with that. And if, if you're worried about this, just know that it's because I'm purposely eating <laughs> your guys' fear foods or trigger foods, stuff like that. That being said, here's the second order of business. It might not look like it, but I'm literally eating faster than I normally do. I need to slow down. I know I'm already eating really slowly, but I'm used to eating very slowly and it helps a lot. But for the sake of the video, I don't know, I'm trying to like find the balance because some people eat really fast. Some people eat really slowly. So I'm just like trying to find the balance for you. So sorry, be patient. The other thing I want to talk to you about is, okay, so Fear Food Friday, right? So I have mentioned before that if Fear Food Friday does well, I would also like to do Trigger Food Tuesday. And I got to thinking about this and I feel like what I'm doing right now is more of a trigger food situation as opposed to a fear food. So like for instance, I think that this is more catered to people people who will binge. So binge eaters, bulimics, anything like that. I feel like this is more catered to them, but I feel like fear food Friday would be more catered to people that don't eat a lot, the restrictors and things like that. So now I'm kind of rethinking. I'm like, should we do trigger food Tuesday like this and then do a different kind of fear food Friday where I still will eat. It'll still be the same thing like me eating and most of the steps will be the same, but it will be more catered towards um, anorexics and people that are after they've like learned how to eat a little bit because I, I, I have no knowledge or I have no ability to teach or to tell um, anorexics what to eat in recovery. I've never had to do that with it before that I can remember. So um, I shouldn't be doing that, but like, I just want to try and figure out a way to include everybody. So I'm wondering if it would be better to do this and maybe I could just do the same thing and still keep it Fear Food Friday, or I could do like a different board for Fear Food Friday and try and cater it more to people who restrict or anorexics and people who, um, and I'm not talking everybody because there, there are people that are so severe that they have to go through the refeeding process that I can't do. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go down that road. That is between you and your doctor and your therapist. And, but if there is something I can do to encourage people to eat on Fridays, I would like to do that as well. So tell me what you think about those ideas. So I could So I could get rid of Topic Tuesday and do um, Trigger Food Tuesday. And then I could still keep Fear Friday. And maybe I could add different distractions to each. I don't know. These are just thoughts going through my brain. Or we can just keep the same. What do you guys think? I want to know your opinions. I really do. I just wish there was a way that I could help other eating disorders better than binge eating and bulimia. Remember, we're, by the way, remember, we are listening to our bodies as we eat, assessing, we're eating, assessing, repeating, assessing, be sure you're assessing, be sure you're assessing. Is that how it's spelled? Ass, S? This is S is ass. Because S, Shani. This burger is so delicious. 
I'm really sorry. I know that a lot of you out there are vegan. I'm really sorry. My Fair Food Fridays are gonna offend you left and right. I'm so sorry about that. Um, the other thing I want to talk about while I finish eating, and then we're gonna spin the wheel for a short distraction. <gasps> I promised you guys I would sing. Uh, um, we'll see, we'll see in a minute. We'll see how I feel in a minute. Um, okay, Gypsy Rose. I also asked you on Instagram to send me questions about her because I asked you guys, what do you want me to talk? Was the first poll that I took and everyone was like, Gypsy Rose, Gypsy Rose, we want your opinion, we want, and I'm like, oh, relax, okay, cool. And then I said, give me like specific questions about Gypsy Road, which I have right here. Um, and I'm just gonna give my opinion. This is just my opinion. I'm not trying to force it on anybody else. This is just how I feel about it. And that's okay. Is that cooked? Yeah. My mouth is so, so small. I literally can only open it this big. Like, and the burger is like that big, so. Gypsy Rose. Okay, so. Um, I have some mixed feelings on this. Um, so hear me out, please. I really do, like very, very mixed feelings. For the most part though, I support her. I love her. I wish nothing but the best for her. I want her to be happy. She deserves to be happy. And I have a lot of empathy for what she went through, especially considered I was abused in my childhood and I know how that feels. And so a lot of the things that people are saying about her and saying that even like when people are saying she's just like her mom, like, because there's that inter interview with her husband where she's squeezing her husband's arm if she doesn't want him to say something like her mom did. Okay, maybe she was. That doesn't make her a bad person. You have to remember this girl grew up like that. She was taught these things while her brain was still developing, which means it's stuck and it will stick forever. So give her a chance to grow. Give her a chance to learn and grow. Um, I still do things here and there that I was taught by my abuser and Danny will call me out on it and I'll do my best to fix it because it's subconscious. It's like, I don't even think about it because it's just how I, it's just what I knew growing up and how I knew to react to certain situations. So it took me a long time to get here where I could be like 100% honest with myself and I still have slips here and there, but unless you've been abused by a parent, especially, you can't understand. None of us can judge really G Gypsy and her decisions and what she did and what she contributed to and everything because obviously the murder was her idea. She's admitted to that. I do believe that she manipulated Nick into um, into killing her mom. A lot of you are saying, well, she is a murderer though. And how how is it different from what Nick did? Well, I will say this, that if you're asking why, like if you're asking, and also if you're asking, sorry, my mind's all over the place. Also, if you're asking like why why could she not escape? Like if she was smart enough to get a computer or even if she had a computer, why didn't she email her dad? Why didn't she call the police? Why didn't she do anything and anything? And again, unless you have been abused by a parent and controlled by a parent, you have no idea the fear that comes behind that. And she was deathly afraid that her mom would kill her if she did. Her mom almost did. Her mom, like she tried to escape that one time. She was tied up to the bed for a couple days with no food and water. That's a scary situation to be in and you never know what her mom's gonna say or do. And, and I understand that feeling. I understand being so afraid that you just would rather just like sit in silence or just deal with it on your own and, and go through the pain than risk reaching out for help and risking your life and potentially other people's lives depending on the abuser. Like my abuser would threaten other people's lives. So I did watch the act twice. <clears throat> I've watched all of her interviews. I don't think she's dangerous. I think that obviously she was capable, is capable of doing really bad things but I don't think that she's dangerous. I think that 
She did what she felt she had to do to survive. She was raised very like, she was raised on very overly romantic ideas. And that goes for like death as well. Like she was raised on Disney movies and being taught about, you know, that this is good and this is bad and the good people live and the bad people die. And she was very sheltered. And, and so in her brain, I can see how she would be like, my only out is if she dies because she's bad and I'm not and she's hurting me and I don't want to kill her, but like, I don't know what else to do at this point because I can't run away. I've tried and she stopped me and I just, none of us can know. I mean, the, the, the stuff that Dee Dee put her through, Dee Dee was good. Dee Dee knew what she was doing. She somehow manipulated dozens of doctors to do unnecessary surgeries on this girl, made it made her purposely lose her teeth. And I know how painful that is. And that scene in, in the act where her teeth are falling out and there's blood everywhere and it like made my heart sink because I've been there and I know what that feels like. And it's excruciatingly painful to lose your teeth. And like all the other abuse that she did, like if she was good enough to do that, to somehow convince dozens of doctors to make it sound like or to that she had diagnoses from cancer to walking problems to all kinds of different things. And holy crap, I would be terrified living with somebody like that. That's a smart person. And you know what? Smart people, they usually use their smarts for goods or bad. And Dee Dee used her smarts for bad. And I think that Gypsy is using her smarts for good. And what do her smarts entail? Also a little bit of what she learned manipulation, a little bit of street smarts, things like that. And for us to, I, from what I see in interviews and other things, she is taking responsibility. And I do believe that she deserves another chance. You know what? I forgot you guys sent questions. So let me ask, see what they are. Hold on. Let me take another bite first. By the way, How are you today? Are you meeting with me? Tell me in the comments if you are. I'm really proud of you. You've got this, keep going. Listen to your body, stop when you're satisfied. By the way, I forgot to add to the whole board video situation. I think the trigger, I think I for sure want to do Trigger Food Tuesday now instead of Fear Food Friday. Because I feel like this all fits better with like a trigger food situation, if you know what I mean. So I think I'm going to do that gonna switch it but um if you want I can still figure out some way to do like a fear food Friday in a different way maybe I don't know so let me know in the comments because I think I am going to switch it to trigger food Tuesday it'll be the exact same board just a different title and we'll go from there and then um see how that goes and see if I can come up with another idea for other people that are just afraid of food in general, that need to start really small and that just are in a different place than binge eaters and bulimics. So I think I'm definitely gonna do that, but give me your advice or give me your opinion. Do you think I should also do a fear foodie, food Friday type thing? Um, keep in mind, I'm not like super well equipped. I had anorexia twice in my life for a year each time. However, I do have fear foods and so do you, we all do, but I just feel like the, the term fear Fear food applies more to people who don't, who are afraid to eat at all. And trigger food applies more to people who want to eat but can't stop eating. You know what I mean? Like it's a trigger food that that once you start, you can't stop type thing. So anyway, so yeah, so let me know what you think about. It's okay to eat. It's okay to feed your body, nourish your body, listen to your body. You got this. I believe in you. Okay, so do you think that her extreme trauma excuses her crime? It's a heavy question, man. Again, like if, if you've ever been abused by a parent, I feel like Okay, so for me, think of it this way, maybe. I don't know, maybe, I don't know. This is just what's coming to my brain, I'm just gonna say it. Like, think of it this way. I 
was abused. And I lived in fear every day because my abuser, it's not like he was like hitting me every day or touching me every day or doing stuff to me every day like that. But he would, he would be pretty mentally, I would say, and emotionally abusive almost every day. But the physical and the sexual other stuff, that didn't actually happen very often. Not that that excuses it, trust me, it doesn't. But I know that like what I went through and what others have been through, for me, what I went through was severe neglect from him. And like my, my mom was wonderful. I had and still have the best mom on the planet. Hi mom, I know you're watching. I love her so much. She was the absolute best mom she could be for us, for our circumstances. She did everything she could do. She didn't know that this abuse was going on, by the way, at least not like the sexual stuff. For me personally, it was it was hard because what what was almost worse or equal to actually being hit or actually being touched was just living in fear. Every day I lived in fear. And what kind of a mood is he gonna be in today? Do I need to cheer him up today? Do I need to stay out of his way today? Is he gonna scream at me today? Is he gonna hit somebody? Is he gonna do something extreme? What's gonna happen today? We never know. Because we've seen what he's capable of, but because he didn't do some of those things very often, every day you woke up thinking like, okay, is today gonna be the day? And you're constantly walking on eggshells your entire childhood and it's scary. And for me personally, I turned that inward and I started hurting myself and I continue to hurt myself for up until now. And that's because I had so much uh, resentment and fear and anger and hurt built up inside of me because of what he did to me. But I'm not the type of person that would want to hurt another person even if they've hurt me. I'm the type of person that takes it on myself and I hurt myself instead but there are plenty of people out there who are abused and they hurt other people because they are hurt. And that's not okay either. But just to give some context and a background, like abuse is such a hard situation because everyone's saying, I mean, look, like my abuser was also abused. He was abused as well. And so is it an excuse that because, because Dee Dee was abused, is that an ex a good excuse for her to abuse Gypsy? No, of course it's not a good excuse. No, absolutely not. I don't think that if you were abused, I don't think that just gives you a ticket to go and hurt somebody just because you were abused. I think that that's bull honestly. And I understand this is such a frustrating topic and you know, she's out there claiming that she's not technically a murderer because she technically didn't do the actual murder. But at the same time, like she actually did plan the whole thing and she manipulated Nick into doing that. But I truly feel, if you want my opinion, I feel that she's remorseful for that. And I feel like she is, um, I want to give her a chance. I want to give her a chance to learn, to keep growing and learning and give her some grace to figure out real life. She has been locked up for all of her early adult years. And then before that, she was locked up in a different way. And she only know, knew those two ways. And now she's like out in the real world, free for the very first time. and all this fame and all of this attention and like it's a lot and so everybody who's like just picking her apart like little just little subtle things that she does just like her mom did or whatever that doesn't mean that she is her mom that doesn't mean she's abusing her husband just because she squeezed his arm when he said something she didn't want him to say that doesn't mean that it's just she's used to okay we've got to look a certain way in front of people and some and she's it's engraved in her like we we're not going to show them the hard stuff right now because then they're going to figure out that something worse is going on but that does make me wonder to bring up my next yes i just took a hair out of my hair don't worry it was my hair i don't care about that i feel like my thoughts are kind of all over the place sorry i'm just like talking so whatever comes out comes out i do want to talk about her husband by the way how are you feeling are you listening to your body? This burger is incredible. I love onions. Did I already say I asked for extra onions and extra tomatoes? I love extra onions and extra tomatoes on my sandwiches and my burgers. Huh. 
her husband. I don't know him. You know, none of us really know him. But if I'm being completely honest, I get a really weird feeling about him. I'm not saying he's like a bad person, but there's something that's off and I can't figure out what it is. I would actually love to hear your opinion on him. Like, is, is it just me? Something just feels off about him. I don't know what it is, but it could all also be that he's also not used to all of this attention and he's new to it and both of them are new to it and both of them are being told by their PR teams one thing and then being told by their family and friends another thing and it's a very con confusing a very confusing place to be because it's like do you listen to your family and friends on this and risk like losing everything that we have or do we listen to our PR team and keep the platform that we have so that we can do good with it. And I believe that that's what they're doing. And I do believe that she's d doing good. And I am excited, honestly, to see what else she does. I'm excited to see what she does with this platform because in all of her in interviews, that's what she says. She says, I want to use this huge platform. I mean, she went from a million one day overnight. She had six million followers. That's so overwhelming but she has stated multiple times she wants to use her platform for good. And so I think we should give her that chance. Oh, by the way, I'm all over the place, man. If I switch it to Trigger Food Tuesday, I think it might also get more traction because Tuesdays, people watch, Tuesdays and Thursdays are the best days to post on YouTube. But more people watch YouTube during the week than they do on the weekends because a lot of people are going out on the weekends. And I think that could be why Fear Free Friday isn't doing as well as my other videos because people don't end up watching them until the beginning of the next week. And by that time, they might not have seen the notification for my videos or I'm not in their feed for my videos anymore. And so I think it might also help the algorithm and it might help us reach a little bit more people if I do talk uh, Trigger Food Tuesday. So I think that's another big reason that I'm wanting to do that. And honestly, I think it works better for me, schedule-wise. I know I'm not busy, so I shouldn't say schedule-wise. Mental health-wise, if I can film it on Monday versus Thursday, you might be wondering why. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I have more energy on Mondays, I guess. That's how I would explain it. Thursdays, I, I'm always like, oh, is it the end of the week yet? It's like a midweek slump and I just, is it time to be with Danny yet? I'm really sad that he's gone all the time and I know if I could make it to the weekend. So it's like the week just keeps getting harder and harder every day. So I typically wake up on Mondays feeling quite motivated. So I think that that could also help. I'm sure that there are so many thoughts that I'm gonna forget that I have about Gypsy Rose. So leave comments about it. And if you have any other questions for me or anything you'd like me to elaborate on, tell me in the comments. I don't know, I just feel bad for her. I feel so bad for what she's been through and what she had to endure every day. And oh my gosh, like she's so she was stunted in growth mentally and physically because of her mother. She, her entire life was taken away from her, her entire, I mean, even, even like, it may, maybe because I'm eating disordered and I think about food all the time, it blows my mind. Ugh, I don't understand how on earth she manipulated Dee Dee, manipulated a doctor to put a freaking feeding tube into Gypsy. I don't know if you've seen the act, um, but the episode where Gypsy realized she can have sugar. And so she sneaks out of bed at night, walks to the kitchen because she can walk and eats a whole bunch of sugar and nothing happens to her and she's fine. For me, I guess as a foodie, I feel bad for her. All those years that she had to miss out on really good food as well, I think is also like really a cruel punishment in my opinion to not let your child eat and not let your child taste things that make you feel good and, and just bring up your serotonin and taking that, like she had nothing, like at least for me as a kid being abused and neglected, at least I have food to go to, you know? 
food was my comfort. And so I guess just personally, I feel bad for her that she never even got to experience that until she was much older. And that's just wrong as well. I'm almost done with this burger. It's delicious. I'm going to be able to finish the whole thing for sure. Like I was saying earlier, how it was overly romanticized to find your prince charming and live happily ever after and the good guy wins and the bad guy loses and most of the time the bad guy dies. And um, again, like she was very stunted in her mental growth and uh, sheltered and didn't know any different and also just extremely afraid of what would ha happen if, um, if she tried to do other things, you know? Um, and I believe that she did her time and I think that she's learned a lot. And, and from here on out, I think that all we can do is decide, you know, or at least me, I'm deciding to support her and root for her. And I'm excited to see what she does with her huge platform. I'm so excited and we'll go from there. And that's how I feel about it, so. That was a big bite. Whoa. Sorry, this was a big bite. Give me a second. Okay, I'm done eating, are you? I hope that you feel satisfied. I feel satisfied. I actually feel like I could eat a little bit more, so I might. I might go have a snack after this, like an apple or something. That was delicious, I loved it. So step four, recognize and be proud. Look what we just did. And we're gonna sit with the feeling together. Look at what we just did. I just ate a cheeseburger. Cheeseburgers were in my top five trigger foods. And I just ate a whole one, but I feel fine and I'm gonna be fine. I'm okay. I'm safe. Nothing bad has happened. Nobody's disappointed in me, except Ed, but he can ride off. We're gonna sit with the feeling, which is very difficult. Just know that I am proud of you, and even if you didn't eat with me in this video, uh, I encourage you to try. Um, always, it's important to eat. It's important to fuel your body. And give yourself some grace and give yourself the chance to learn and grow at your pace and what you need for your body and always talk to your doctors and therapists about um, your eating and, and nutritionists are really great to get as well. Just know that I'm proud of you and I see you and even if you didn't eat with me, that's okay. I'm proud of you too. I'm glad that you're here. While we sit with the feeling, we're gonna go, we're gonna put it in between to step six, which is a short distraction, which is what this wheel is. Now, I told you guys last week I would sing. Should I try singing? What if I spun it and if it lands on singing again, then we will do singing. How about that? Okay. Seriously? Ugh. It landed on singing a song. I don't know if you can see it, but it did. Oh, the rose, and we're talking about Gypsy Rose. Cool. Well, I guess we're gonna sing. Here's the thing, sometimes in life, things just don't go the way that you need them to go when you need them to go it and do it to get the thing done when it's supposed to be done for it to be done on the time that it needs to be done in the way that you want it to be done, but it won't be done in the way that you want it to be done because sometimes things just don't cooperate like my voice. I don't know what is happening. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or all of my years of bulimia are catching up with me. I cannot sing anymore and it's getting worse and worse gradually, especially over the last like month or so. It's getting harder and harder for me to even sing. I'm not a great singer to begin with, but like 
even my level of singing. I can't even do that anymore. I don't know what's happening. So I'm going to ask you for another week of grace so that I can practice more and warm up my voice more and find a song that I can still sing and do that for you. Um, but until then, I do owe you a short distraction. And so here is that. And then it will go back into the eating video um, after that. And so thank you again for giving me grace again. And I will do my best to try and sing for you next week. And I will work on it this week. And I'll, hopefully my voice will cooperate to get at least half a song out would be great. That's better than nothing. So just something, anything. Come on. Come on, little guy. Come on, you still got stuff in there. Come on, little diaphragm. You can do this. Anyway, okay, so here's your short distraction of the day. <gasps> Grandpa loved lemon. Hmm. Snow glows white on the mountain tonight. Not a footprint to be seen. Kingdom of isolation, and it looks like I'm the queen. Can you hear me over the music? That wind is howling like this swirling storm inside. Couldn't keep it in, heaven knows I tried. Don't let them in, don't let them see Be the good girl you always have to be Conceal, don't feel, don't let them know Well now they know Let it go, let it go Can't hold it back anymore Let it go, let it go Was terrible. We're still sitting with the feeling here. I know it's not uncomfortable. I know this. The hardest step in all this is step five. Sitting with the feeling is so freaking hard because you're not used to keeping food down. You're not used to eating sometimes. And so it's very difficult. I know it's difficult, but you can do it. I promise you can do it. Just little baby steps at a time and just listen to your body. And that goes for pe people who are the other people I was talking about that I'm not sure like exactly how to help fully. But like, it goes for you too, just intuitive eating. Listen to your body, it's very important. So short distraction. And now we're gonna appreciate the food, again, because it's very important to do that. I'm so grateful for the food that I just ate. It was a delicious burger. Thank you Del Taco for preparing it. And what did this food do for me? Well, it's gonna turn into energy. I'm gonna be able to go and edit this video and go to Costco with Danny tonight. And I'm gonna have energy because I ate something. And if I don't eat something, then I don't have energy. And then you're sicker all the time. And that's not fun. And so it's really good for you and really appreciate where this food came, came from and really appreciate the fact that you have food because so many people out there don't even have food and it's heartbreaking. 
we're so blessed to even have food. It's amazing, huge blessing that I think we all take for granted sometimes, so. All right, step eight is we stop talking about the food completely. The reason we do this is because we're done. We're done eating for now, okay? This meal, we're done. We ate, we did it. We appreciated the food. We talked about the food while we were eating. It was amazing. And now we move on. We don't think about it. We don't obsess over like, oh my gosh, what did I just eat? And do I have to throw up? Do I have to overexercise? Da da da. No, no, no. This is why we stop thinking about the food. We're done with it. We ate. We're done with it. It's time to move on, which is step nine is where we pick a long distraction out of this lovely box. This is a box that I made that's full of long, uh, uh, distractions and this is just an idea for you you don't have to do this I, I just made a whole bunch of stuff in here that I think could really help with the long distraction because it's very important to have a long distraction after you eat it's very important to have something to take your focus uh, away from the fact that you just ate so I'm just gonna pick one out of here again this is just a suggestion you don't have to do it okay Read something. I'm good, but if you would like to read something, that's great. I'm not a reader, I don't like reading. I can read like, I mean, I can read. I can read, I'm just not, I, I'm not a book person, I'm not a read, I'm just, like I'll read like comments and magazines and emails and text messages and stuff. Does that count? I don't read, but if you do, that could be a good distraction for you. So, and now my friends, we did it. We're done. Look at that. Now it's time to go. It's time to move on. Where's the bell? Yay, we did it. It's time to move on now. It's time to get on with your day and it's time to just, or your night or whatever you're doing, take your long distraction, whether it be what I just picked or something else, um, or even going to sleep is okay to take a nap after if you're able to do that. Just keep yourself busy, move on with your day, move on with your life. You've got this. I believe in you so heartily of all the times and the places. And I'm so grateful that you guys were here with me today. I am beyond proud. And I will see you guys on Tuesday for Trigger Food Tuesday, which will be another one of these. So I will see you on Tuesday for that. I love you so much. Leave questions, leave suggestions for Trigger Food Tuesday in the comments. And I will see you guys on Tuesday. I love you so much. And remember forever and always that you're beautiful, you're worth it, and I am too. Thank you for watching. Bye.